Hi there and a very warm welcome to this week's quick tip. So after my vacation, this is a quick one about light IDs, so how you can render out separate lights and comp them together. I know that I've showed that before, for example in the Fusion Comp tutorial, but I decided to make a standalone tutorial for those people who just want to get this bit of information. If you want to support me and what I'm doing, I have a Patreon now, so you can head over to Patreon, the link is down in the description below. But now, without further ado, let's get started. Welcome to our scene, so I decided to not show this with primitive objects, but with my Cornell box room. And those of you who are familiar with Cornell boxes get the reference. Basically what I wanted to do is show you the examples with light IDs on a scene that more closely matches productions. So let me explain to you what we have here real quick. So we have a room with different lights and we can turn on and off different lightings. So let's turn off the sunlight and you can see the room now has a different mood for it. For example, also if we turn on the stand light or the stand lamp, we are getting a cozy warm lighting situation as you would have in the evening or the night. Now, while you could mix and match different lighting situations, for example, as we had the sun and the room light turned on, you can adjust that to your liking. But every time I turn on and off a light, the rendering has to start from scratch and we need to wait a couple of seconds till we see what we are doing. And the huge advantage of lighting IDs is that we can transport the mixing and matching of lights into the comp stage where we can work with the final rendering and don't have to wait for the rendering to catch up again. So as the name of the tutorial implies, we are going to give each light their own ID and this enables us to store those lights as a separate path to then bring them in into our comp system to just be able to mix and match. So what I want to do here is turn on all the lights. This might look very strange, but as you remember, we can mix and match them later. So we want to render all the lighting situations at once. Next, we want to go to the actual thing and give the lights their own IDs. So let's twirl down the light section here and go to the octane object tag of one of the lights, scroll down and you can find the ID right here. Now, if you are creating a light from scratch, it always has the ID of one. Also, if you have an emissive material, so let's go to our LED, for example, and go to the nodes, you can see you have an emission there, which also has an ID. If I scroll down here, you can see it's also ID one. Octane offers you up to eight IDs for different lights, but you can also stick multiple lights in one ID group and their contribution is then pooled within this ID. I didn't change the IDs right now because I think there is a better way to do this. So I have it right here and it's called the Light Manager. Now I didn't find the Light Manager anywhere in the Octane menu, so what you have to do is go to Shift C and search for it here. So let's open it from here. Here we go. And you can see we have all our emissive objects listed here, including the light and also the nodes we have in our scene. And you can also see that all of those are labeled as ID1. That shows us that all the lights are pooled under ID1 right now. You can also see the Octane Daylight system here is in its own ID. And this is because either HDRIs and daylight systems have their own IDs by default and cannot be changed to other IDs. So if you would have an HDRI, it would be in the environment ID. And our sun and sky model here is, as the name implies, under the sunlight ID. All right, so let's keep on moving and actually put those lights here into different IDs. So this is easy as dragging and dropping those lights into their different ID channels here. So we have set our different lights into IDs one, two, and three. Now that we've done everything that we want, let's close the light manager and actually deal with the passes. So let's go into our render settings and make sure Octane is set as a renderer and then go to render a regroup here because this is where we set up our light IDs. 
First of all, make sure it's enabled and then set your render output path. I use render tokens to make my life easier. With the output format, we want to choose a 32 or 16 bit float format, so I recommend sticking with AXR Octane. The depth is okay with 16 bit. This is not to be confused with a 16 bit integer as you have with PNG files. For the compression, we will choose DWAB because this is the smallest compression, but it still gives you all of the data you need. The interesting thing is that it's mostly smaller than an 8 bit PNG file. So next we want to save the beauty because this is a good check for comparison. So if we layer up all the light IDs on top of each other in compositing, we should get back the exact same result as our beauty. So I always save the beauty as a reference check to make sure I did everything right. Now I never want to use multi-layer files. This is a personal preference. You can do so if you want. Some of you might ask why floating point is so important. So the floating point format has the big advantage of storing above wide values. So it stores all the data the rendering is generating. And this is very important if you want to mix lighting, because lighting can have very huge intensities. And if they are not there in the comp stage, your mixing doesn't work reliably or properly. So always make sure you're working with a floating point file format. Next, we want to actually set up our light passes. So let's go to the AUV manager here, go to search and search for light. Here we go. Now we have four lights, one sunlight and three other lights. So we want to have four AUVs here. So one, two, three, four. Now we have four AOVs, but they're all the sunlight. So let's change this. We want to set this to light ID one, this to light ID two, and this to light ID three. And that's all we are going to do here. So let's close both of those windows. And we can see we now have our multipasses set up here. And if we click on those, you can see those singular lights showing up. So sunlight, light one, light two and light three. One more thing that is really important for your output. So let's go to the render setting one more time and go to the main tab. We want to set our color space to linear sRGB because with blending light or intensity data, we want to always go with a linear interpretation because then this is mathematically sound. Small addition here with color spaces, most people don't think of it this way, but ACES is also linear. It isn't written here, but if we would go for an ACES CG workflow, this is also a linear workflow and light blending would work the same in there as well. If you want to have more information about ACES, you can watch one of my tutorials about After Effects or Fusion Studio in the info box above. In this tutorial, to make it more easy for you, we are just going to work with linear sRGB values here. Lastly, before we render, we want to make sure we have the sample count as high so all the lights look noise free in our light passes. So for example, this light is the most noisy one. So we want to make sure we set the max samples as high. So this light here in its pass don't have any noise or at least the amount of noise you're comfortable working with. Also, sometimes you won't get rid of noise and this is because of the adaptive sampling. Because the main render has portions where it is very little noise when you look at the whole image with all the lights turned on. So what you sometimes need to do is go to the um, adaptive sampling and turn that off. That really depends on your lighting and on a scene by scene basis. So sometimes it's totally fine to have it on. And sometimes if you have noise and cannot get rid of it, no matter how high the samples, you might turn that adaptive sampling off. So I will now go on and render out this image and we will see each other in comp. Welcome to Compland with After Effects. Now this is going to be a short one since there's not a lot to comping light passes. First of all, let's go into the comp settings here. Since we are not dealing with an ACES color management, let's go with the Adobe color manage, which reflects the old way After Effects was set up before there was ACES. Make sure you're set up the bit depth to 32 bit. 
and set up the color space to the same space we are rendering in, which is sRGB. Last but not least here, make sure your comp is linearized since we are working in a linear workflow. All right, let's bring in the files here. Here we go. One thing to add, as we were rendering out, I noticed that I had enabled the post effects. The post effects give a nice glow to the image, so all lights get a glow. But of course it alters the beauty, so we cannot compare it to our stacked layer of light passes anymore. So I turned that off and rendered again. Speaking of the main pass, let's have a look at it and drag it into the comp so we can see it. So this is our final render. Now what's really dear to my heart, and I bring that up every time, is that you understand the benefits of a floating point workflow. So if I turn down the exposure in my image, you can see that pixels that were formerly overexposed now have the right exposure and right color. So why is that? Welcome to a short excursion to chart time. So you have the unclamped and clamped values. So unclamped is floating point, clamped is eight or 16 bit values that are integer based. So basically when you go from zero to one, you get values from black to white. Now the difference begins at the white value while clamped values are always clamped to white. The unclamped values obviously can hold much lighter values than white. So while your screen is limited of displaying it at the white point, you still have the data in the pixels so you can retrieve it when needed. So back in the comp, you have access to all the data that is written in by the renderer. And this, as you might have guessed, is very important when dealing with different light passes and adding them together. So let's reset the exposure to zero and let's deal with the light passes. Let's delete the main pass here and let's bring in all the lights. So this is the sunlight, light one and two and three. Here we go. So by default, you only see the topmost layer, which right now is the sunlight. But if we go to the layers and add them together, you can see we are almost getting our main pass. So to compare, let's bring in our main comp here again and toggle it on and off. While most of it is matching, there is one difference and this is I forgot to also export the environment. Now with a daylight system, there's not only a sun, there's also a sky and the sky is stored in the environment ID of the light passes. So I forgot that on purpose to show you a very interesting fact. So what I wanted to show is that we can retrieve our missing light pass by using the existing ones. Since all of this is based on math, we can use our math toolset to retrieve information. But before the question marks above your head get too big, let me show you. So we have a path that is the main path where all of it is in there, all the lighting information, including the environment. And we have all the other channels, including all the lights, but the environment. So if we subtract all the other lights from the main path, we should be able to only see the environment. So let's try this by putting the main path to the lowest position and then select all the other path and go to subtract. And you can see it kind of worked. So now we are left with only the environment channel here active. Now you can see there's some error popping up especially at the places where we have very bright lights. And this is actually one of the very, very few cases where the DWAB compression is too weak and doesn't hold up completely. But it is still fine and shows the way you can work with math and your passes. So let's actually pre-compose that path as our environment path. So let's do this, select all of them, Go to Composition, Layer, Recompose, and call it Environment. Here we go. And then we go and add all of our other passes on top of that again. Here we go, Add. Now, let's go and select some of the lights. We can turn them on and off by 
deselecting the passes here, but we can also adjust their strength by going to the opacity and turn that down a little bit so we can get an image that matches our exact vision. Now, sometimes you want to make a light source even stronger. You can also do that. Let's go with the sunlight and the environment here. And to make the sunlight, for example, stronger, we can add an exposure and dial the exposure up, for example, by two or even more by five. You can see now we get a very, very strong sunlight effect in our room. Now let's delete the exposure again. So let's get a very nice scenery dialed in here. So this is a nice evening mood here. And of course, you are not limited. As you've seen in the intro, you can even animate those lights. Also, if you have animations, of course, you are not restricted to still images. You can animate your animations by having still image sequences for every of those multi-layer files. Last but not least, to give this image a finishing touch, I'm going to add a adjustment layer with a glow from Red Giant Optical Glow. So let's do this and get a optical glow. Set it to linear since we are working with a linear image and then adjust it accordingly. And now you have a glow that you would expect from a bright light like this. But the cool thing is the glow reacts to the lighting, of course. So if you change the light's intensity, the glow gets weaker as you would expect from a real world photograph. Of course, I would go with some contrast and color correction on top. And yes, the After Effects comp tutorial is still bland and coming. So keep your eyes out for that. But for now, I think I've showed you everything that I know when it comes to light IDs, and I hope you can get something really nice out of that. And by that, we are done. So thank you very much for watching, for staying with me that long. Next week's tutorial is probably going to be the universal camera. As this is quite some work, I shied away from that. So hopefully I can find the motivation to go through with it. If you like the tutorials I'm doing and want to see more in the future, you can help me pay my bills by supporting me on Patreon. Let me conclude this by wishing you a great week and happy lighting. Bye.